Um, we do just have two brief updates. This is outside of... Um, could we please have members of the public sitting in the public gallery? Gail, please. Right. There's no local board input. We will move to... There are no extraordinary items. I do have two, uh, two issues we're just going to have a quick briefing on. Um, first of all, obviously we haven't had a meeting since December, so this is going to be brief. I'd prefer no questions or debate, but we just need to update. Um, Megan Tyler is going to update us briefly on Plan Change 78 and our correspondence with the ministers on this. Kia ora, Mr Chair. Kia ora, uh, councillors. I'd to see you for 2024. Uh, just a quick uh, update on the letter that you know we've referenced over the last couple of weeks with you and we've attached in the summary of information items that we've sent to Minister Bishop and Minister Simmons, who are Minister of Housing and Infrastructure um, and Minister of Environment, respectively. Uh, just to uh, confirm in terms of the Plan Change 78 and, and all that kind of land use stuff that we've been grappling with over the last year or two, um, we have uh, asked them specifically for an extension to time um, on that matter, but ultimately to get a far better um, and holistic solution for Auckland, because at the moment it's just unworkable and it's um, for us, and it's just uh, not connecting at all um, in terms of the outcomes that both we and the Crown will want. So the letter just outlines some of the issues that we've had recently. We've had the storm events uh, in 2023. We've had this new government coming in saying they are going to provide different policies, uh, the ability to opt in to the uh, medium density residential standards as opposed to making them mandatory. Um, they have terminated the light rail project, which of course we had carved out because that needed to be dealt with um, differently and specifically. Um, and they are changing, obviously, some of the... They've, they've repealed the resource management reform. So there's a bunch of change that is happening here that means that what we're trying to do is just no longer connected. So that letter raises that um, and, has, and has asked and given options to the ministers for various things they could do. So, look, the, the quick update is we did send that a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've not had a response from the minister yet. However, we know that he, has, um, he and um, Minister Simmons have received the letter that officials are briefing them on it. Um, the conversations with officials have been uh, positive, so I do believe we're going to get um, a useful solution here from the ministers. We just haven't heard back, and I know that the chair and deputy chair of this committee and the mayor has been working um, in the background also on this. So that's my update. We haven't heard back yet, but we're having uh, positive conversations, uh, but yet to hear back. Thanks, Mr Chair. Kia ora. Thank you, Megan. I just thought that was important to update with hearings potentially coming up soon. Um, right, the next item um, on Murawai, I have had uh, many questions from uh, members of the public, also members of this committee, also uh, Glenn Walcox from the Independent Māori Statutory Board. Um, we obviously had the tragic loss of Madison Chamberlain through um, summer. Um, we won't go into talking about details about um, that incident, and I know there's an investigation underway, but we'll just have an update on the summer closure and going forward uh, items that may come back to this committee. Um, so Claudia will give a brief update, and once again, I prefer we don't debate that, but she's happy to take your questions after the committee um, or email any other queries you have. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa, and uh, thank you, Chair, for the introduction, and it is lovely to see all of our councillors here today. Um, so thank you very much for the opportunity to give you a quick update. I know that this topic has been of keen interest to many of you and our teams have received a number of queries around how council or other agencies will be managing this situation. Before I give you a quick update, I would just like to firstly give our sincere condolences to the family and friends of Maddie as a result of this tragic incident. I can imagine it's a very, very difficult time for them. And um, I would also ask that we can continue to hold them with the respect that they will need during this time. Uh, and this is a complex topic, and I know it's an important topic for many members of our community. Uh, since the event, our council teams have received a number of inquiries regarding how do we, um, or what steps we can take to improve public safety, what steps we should take 
for example, around more permanent vehicle access restrictions, if we should be changing speed limits or implementing other enforcement actions. So what I'm going to do quickly today is just cover the current situation and also talk about some of the proposed next steps. So in terms of the matter around beach access by vehicles at Murdawai, it's a very complex matter. It requires multi-agency input and has been looked at over a very prolonged period of time, including being discussed at multiple committees and local board meetings. We're also very aware that the community views of access to the beach can vary. And so finding a solution that is amenable to all can add complexity. Our teams at Council have worked very hard with multiple agencies, including the Police, Fire Emergency New Zealand, our colleagues at Auckland Transport, and of course the local board and our iwi partners regarding the management of vehicle access in Murawai. Currently, that access is restricted to permit holders. And Council has, over specific periods, closed the beach to access, including to minimise fire or public safety risks. Unfortunately, during these times, we've seen instances where obstacles were moved, cut, or navigated around, and that vehicles still accessed the beach or dunes. Therefore, our council regional parks and regulatory teams have and continue to work with our colleagues at Auckland Transport, the police, other agencies, and our iwi partners regarding how these situations can be best managed and safety can be improved and the environment, environmental damage be minimised. Based on the requests that we've received, we're continuing to investigate further options with the local board and other agencies, including around potential access restrictions, speed limit changes, or enforcement approaches. The aim of these discussions is to determine how to best how beach as sorry to determine how beach as access can be best managed, safety can be improved, and the environmental damage be minimised. But the work is complex. So what we're proposing to do is we're compiling a, a series of um, options and we're proposing to host a PEP committee workshop potentially in April or May so that we can discuss this in more details, hear more about your views and then bring it back to committee for a decision perhaps later. I'd just like to end my update noting that the Murawai community has been through significant challenges in the last year. So we would like to make a plea to visitors to Murawai and also visitors to other beaches to please follow the rules that are in place. Those rules are there to help protect public safety, the environment, and of course safety for all of our Auckland communities. And we really value the support that our communities can all play to help keep people and the public safe. Ngamihinui kia koutou katoa, and thank you. Kia ora, thank you very much, Claudia. I hope both those um, items give you uh, some update on the work going um, behind, the, um, behind the scenes, and just wanted to make sure that you knew that those are two were going on. So slightly out of order from a normal process of committee, but um, both Councillor Dalton and I thought that was important. Um, thank you for that. Right, we'll move straight on to item eight. Um, I know that Councillor Baker would like to move, and I'm happy to second, but we'll go into a presentation. We've got Craig and Peter. Thank you both, and apologies for delaying your time with the technical difficulties. Um, so you're going to go through a presentation. Um, we'll probably take questions at the end. Yes, that's right. Well, good morning, Mr Chair and um, <coughs> Planning Committee, uh, Planning Environment Committee. Uh, this is about uh, private plan change request in Pukeko East, uh, Golding Road, uh, 50 Pukeko East Road and 47 Golding Road. Um, the purpose is 
decide how to process um, this private plan change um, to the Auckland Unitary Plan from OMAC Limited and Next Generation Properties. Um, the applicants to rezone, it's about 27 hectares uh, from future urban to residential mixed housing urban. Um, so, yeah. I'm a, a team leaner in Central South under John Duguid, and with me today is Peter Rayburn, the planning consultant, also reporting planner for this particular uh, plan change. So, over to Peter now, through you, Mr Chair. And uh, members do have the presentation in Nexus. It is just, we're just waiting to get it up. So, um, thank you. Uh, feel free to start and we'll, print, we'll okay. catch up. Sorry about that. Good morning, Mr Chair and, uh, and uh, committee members. Yes, this is, a, um, this is a private plan change request for um, an area of currently future urban zone land on the, at the um, eastern side of Pukekohe. Um, the plan change request is for this area to be rezoned mixed housing urban. Um, so the... The, um, the plan that's on display there shows the, um, the plan change area. So if you can, if you can picture coming into Pukekohe from um, Bombay, um, you come into um, a developed part of Pukekohe on the, on the right-hand side of the road. Um, this lands on the left-hand side as you approach the Golding Road uh, roundabout. So it's 27 hectares um, with frontage to Pukekohe East Road and uh, Golding Road. Um, <clears throat> the plan shows some um, two plan changes that have already been processed in this area. Um, plan change 74 uh, uh, between Golding Road and Station Road. Um, that was a combination of mixed housing, urban and light industrial zoning um, and there's about 920 dwellings proposed in that area. Uh, and then opposite the site um, on the corner of Golding Road and East Street is Plan Change 76. Um, that's um, another 900 dwellings proposed in that area. Um, so there's an association, as, as I'll um, explain a bit further, between that plane chain 76 area and this area across the road, which um, would be about another 580 um, dwellings. So there's a bit going on in the area. Um, can, we, uh, can we just go to that? So this is a this is a concept plan of um, how the zoning uh, could be developed, and the the concept planning in, in turn has informed the precinct plan, which is part of the plan plan change proposal. Um, in um, as part of plan change seventy six, um, opposite Golding Road. There's a, um, a collector road connection which goes back to Birch Road, which in turn leads down to Station Road and the Pukekohe uh, Rail Station. So that's, that's, that's an important um, linkage um, proposed through this area. And this plan change uh, proposes to extend that uh, collector road. So that's the, the blue road, and this is part of the... Uh, the requirements for the plan change through up to Pukekohe East Road. So that provides, if you like, an alternative um, road connection between this side of Pukekohe and back to the, um, to the um, Pukekohe um, rail station. Um, the other uh, particular feature of this plan is that there are um, a number of stream uh, corridors and wetlands in this area. So the, uh, the proposal and the plan change is that those areas be uh, protected and enhanced. Um, so that would be part of the, um, part of the development requirements. The, um, there's a, an area shown for a neighbourhood reserve. So that's on the right-hand side of that plan between uh, two of those um, 
stream corridors and um, a, um, other areas, which are the sort of light green areas which are identified as open space, um, that are in um, uh, floodplains and the proposal and the plan change that they, they are open space, no building development areas. Um, so if we go to the next slide. Can you hear me online? Okay. We know what it is. Okay. I think so everyone can hear me online. I think they've figured out what the the issue is. I have lost Sandra, but I think we can we'll continue with the presentation. Um, we do have a quorum, so technically legally we can carry on without sound, but I don't think that is very good to those um, online, so continue. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
uh, when this um, application was lodged, um, it was the Future Human Land Supply Strategy 2017 that applied. And um, under that document, um, this area was identified as being development ready in the area 20, in, in the period 2023 to 2027. So um, um, the application was made on the basis that it aligned um, with the sequencing of um, development for this area. Since then, of course, um, there's been a new future development strategy. So that was um, so that that formally has come into effect and um, just very recently. Um, and that strategy for this area has amended the development ready time period to 2035. Um, so that's obviously beyond um, the, the the previous time period. Now that. Um, that advance date um, is based on an expected timeline for, for the delivery of bulk infrastructure. Um, so that, that particular matter has been the subject of uh, quite some examination in, the, in looking at this plan change to date. So I'll just go over the, the elements of that just briefly. Um, in terms of um, stormwater management, um, the proposal is that um, that, that be um, dealt with entirely within the confines of the site, so um, uh, won't rely on bulk infrastructure beyond the site. Um, and uh, Healthy Waters has been involved in um, assessing that issue uh, to the point of looking at um, a stormwater management plan for the site, and, uh, and um, there's currently some confidence that. Um, that the site can, can deal with stormwater. With um, wastewater and water, um, Sandra, can we just go back to the, um, to the plan showing the wider area? Yeah, the other one. Yeah, that one there. Um, <laughs> with water and wastewater, um, there, there is upgrading required. Um, um, but that upgrading is required regardless for the development of that plan change 76 area and also plan change 74 uh, for, that, for that matter. They, they are both operative plan changes and have both got requirements in them that um, no development can proceed until, um, until that upgrading um, is, is in place. Um, and, and a similar similar provisions proposed uh, in terms of this proposed plan change. Um, but the key point there is that, um, and, and as I said earlier, um, these development areas on either side of Golding Road are, um, uh, are integrated, including from the point of view of uh, of water and wastewater in infrastructure. The the wastewater for this area depends on a pump station that is proposed to be developed in plan change 76, and in turn, um, some upgrading um, between the plan change 76 area and the existing trunk infrastructure, which is part of a, an upgrading scheme proposed by, um, um, by Watercare. Similarly, uh, water reticulation will connect to the, um, to, the, um, to the water reticulation that's otherwise required for um, development of that plan change 76 area. Um, so water care, um, they've been involved in the, in the processing of this plan change to date. Um, there are nuts and bolts to sort out, but, um, but water, care, water care themselves are confident that, um, that there's no uh, major issues that would pre prevent this plan change uh, proceeding at least to the next step. Um, so that leaves transport, um, which is generally <laughs> The, um, the major issue in terms of bulk infrastructure and, um, and uh, what is required to be put in place and uh, attendant um, funding issues. Um, the, so where that's got to is that um, Auckland Transport have indicated that, um, that they're, they're um, I won't say happy, but that they, they think that this area can be adequately serviced with um, upgrading of local 
um, roading infrastructure. So that is the the Golden Road frontages um, the, and the Pukekohe East Road frontage and also the um, improvements to the Golden Road, um, Pukekohe East Road and East, East Road intersection. Um, now, um, the, the road frontage upgradings are, are, are the responsibility of the, of the developer. Um, so that's just the standard, um, standard requirement that's applied. So that's dealt with including uh, proposed rules in the plan change which require those works to be done prior at the first stage of any development. Um, the intersection is um, required improvements to the intersection are, are already a subject of plan change 76 and plan change 74 provisions also proposed to be a trigger for the, um, for the development of this area. So um, there's a number of existing uh, plan change areas that contribute to, um, uh, to that requirement and um, there, there will need to be some coordination um, between, the, um, between the developers of these three areas to sort out how to how to satisfy that trigger, if you like, and, and, and allow development of these areas. Um, again, um, that's regarded as being uh, potentially achievable, um, and whilst there might, may need to be some refinements to the plan change, depending on a closer examination in, in the later stages of, of, of this process, um, again, that's not seen as a, as a, as a showstopper. So just going back to the, um, to the future development strategy and uh, the 2035 date and the reasoning behind that, um, um, it appears that, um, that, that, um, that subject to appropriate uh, provisions in the plan change, um, um, this area can be developed without creating any, any demand on what is uh, not otherwise already planned. Um, so that, uh, in terms of the recommendation, there are three primary options for the committee. Um, one is um, uh, that the plan change be rejected, uh, um, and that is, doesn't go beyond this point. Um, the thresholds for rejection um, are, are, are quite high. They, um, uh, there needs to be something substantially wrong with what's being proposed, and in this case, the, um, this is a plan change that is consistent with the Koei Pirata Structure Plan and, um, and, and general planning um, uh, directions uh, for this area, and there doesn't appear to be any major reason not to uh, allow it to, uh, to proceed. The second option is the Council adopt the plan change as its own, um, so the, count, the, the council would be responsible for it from this point on, and, and um, there's um, no basis seen um, as being necessary for council to do that, and indeed, I don't think it's the applicant's expectation that the council adopt the plan change. And the third one, which is a recommendation, is that the plan change be accepted to proceed to the next stages in the, um, in the plan change process, which is not notification, um, public notification submissions and hearing. So um, that's the presentation. Mr Chair, happy to respond to any questions. Kia ora, thank you very much, Peter. Um, right, we'll just go straight to questions. I think it's fairly straightforward in the agenda and the recommendations there. Checking. Uh, Councillor Darby. Um, can we just see those recs? Are they as printed? Are they oh, sorry, there was one additional that uh, is a Chair's rec that Councillor Baker has accepted around uh, staff repair a council submission on this private plan change, particularly focusing on infrastructure requirements and funding and how the MDRS provisions should be incorporated, um, but approved by the Chair, Deputy Chair, and a member of the Independent Māori Statutory Board. That was exactly what I would have been asking for. Yeah. Thanks, Councillor Baker. Good. Um, just a question for Megan. Um, where are we up to in reviewing the development contributions policy for this broader catchment, not just this particular area, but the broader catchment of Pukekohe. I know we're focusing on Drury. Mm -hmm. 
through the chair, we um, you made that policy change in Drury last year. We're th we're now moving into that northwest area. There is a there is a intention to do it across uh, the whole of the region, but it takes time, and we can't do everything everywhere. So, we're currently working in the northwest, uh, not not in this um, Pukekohe area. So, it will be some years away. At at this stage under under this kind of process, unless there's any changes to our ability, whether it's legislative ability or our kind of funding um, and financing opportunities. Okay. And, and when does the committee next get an update on um, how that work is progressing? Good question. I don't know. Let me come back to you. I'm not sure. Okay. Chair, the point I'm making there is I think we need to, um, in doing this work, you know, we're, we're pretty hamstrung um, due to statute but there's there's another body of work that you've really got to keep your eyes on because uh, it does induce infrastructure demand um, and making sure that we actually have the funding mechanisms whereby the beneficiary the key beneficiary pays for the infrastructure and I think that's just gonna considering the, the decisions of uh, central government in the last week it's it's just so critical that we, we track the funding mechanisms, the financing mechanisms with the development proposals that are coming forward. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, um, we will have quite a significant reduction in ability to fund transport infrastructure. So that is important. Um, and we'll ensure that finance um, are keeping us updated on how that side of the ledger rolls out um, when these things are going on as well. Kia ora, um, Councillor Fletcher. Just following on from that, um, and thank you for the work on this. Um, it was great to have all of those options put before us and the clarity of it. But one of the concerns that I've had, um, and it doesn't relate just to this, but with the development sector being quite fragile at the moment, um, how, do, how do we evaluate whether or not with these private plan changes the, the businesses that are requesting them are sufficiently robust to see the time commitments um, that are required for the implementation of infrastructure. Through the chair, that's a really <clears throat> interesting point you make. You know, in legislation and reality, that's got nothing to do with the decisions that we make as a regulatory authority, or the recommendations that we make, uh, as, you, as you know. But I think that that goes to the reality of life and what's actually going to happen, whether some of these are going to continue through or whether they'll fall on the wayside. But really, at this point of what we're doing, it's not something that we can take into account. I realise that, but I'm, I'm mindful that in the event that things went topsy-turvy, and maybe it is an issue for us to discuss in other committees that have delegations for those sorts of things. But you end up with orphan sites, and inevitably, the council will have to pick up um, the responsibility in those situations. So I just, I just note in a cautious way that that is the reality of our, our current environment. Yeah, absolutely, Councillor. Um, Thank you for that. Are there any more questions? Doesn't look like it. Cool. Right, we'll move to the debate. Ask officers to step back. Thank you very much for your advice on this one. And I'll just check if Councillor Baker would like to lead off and say anything. I was going to wait to see if anyone else had something to say, and then I could just come in at the end and roll in over the top. But, uh... Think it a second. <laughs> you, can, you can get a right of reply as well, Councillor. Um, oh, look, I mean, this is... Pukeko has been through three big major planning um, processes over the years that uh, Auckland Council has been involved with the Pukeko area plan, um, the unitary plan and the structure plan that followed. And uh, this area has been, um, has been chosen because it's on the east, it is where Pukeko should be growing, and uh, this just makes sense in terms of finishing off um, that sort of area, and uh, there's very little risk and as per anyone that read the report, will see we have no grounds to reject, so we shouldn't be. We should be accepting and let the process be. Kia ora. Thank you, Councillor. Any other uh, comments? Sorry. Right, easy. All those in favour? 
Are there any opposed? Aye. Right. Sorry, was that was that in favour or that was me? That was in favour. Okay, cool. Sorry, <laughs> bit a bit of a lag from Waitaka. Sorry, Councillor Turner. Um, right, there were no abstentions. Thank you. That's passed. Right, and thank you to, for those who are here for that item who had to wait through all that technological um, issues. So thank you. Right, we'll go on to waste management.